Hello, everybody. We're so thankful that you came here to worship with us here in our live stream at Great Bridge. No matter where we're at, we're still the body of Christ, and we love to worship our God. So join us as we praise our God. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the live stream here at Great Bridge Church. We're so thankful that you came here to worship with us. Here's a few upcoming events that'll help you get connected here with us at Great Bridge Church. One of the ways we worship our Lord is through tithes and offerings. You can give in two different ways. You can send a check in by mail to our church, or you can give online. Go to www.greatbridgefwb.com. Scroll down to the online giving tabs and follow the prompts to give. December the 11th, we are going to be having a teen Christmas party here at the church. We're so excited about being able to celebrate together with each other. So make sure if you're from 6th to 12th grade, you're invited and we would love to see you there. The Christmas season is here. And with that, we, our church has provided some Advent devotional books that we're going to be doing together as a church. You can come pick those up today from 1 to 3 at the church, or um, if you contact your Sunday school teacher or me at jhuff at greatbridgefwb.com, we can deliver those to you. So be sure to pick those up or get those delivered so that we can study God's Word together. Also, our Sunday school curriculum has come in. So if you want to come pick those up, uh, the same thing, you can come pick those up from 1 to 3 or contact your Sunday school teacher or myself to get those delivered. On behalf of Pastor Jay and Miss Annette, we just want to say thank you for all the prayers that you have prayed for Pastor Jay as he is in the hospital. Uh, we're so uh, thankful for what God is doing, but we're also still praying that God will heal him. In uh, Psalm chapter 124 Verse 8, it says, Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. So if you would join me um, in prayer for our pastor um, as he's battling COVID.
Father, thank you for the day. Uh, we pray that you put your hand on Pastor Jay, uh, that you uh, be with the doctors as they try to figure out what to do, but also we just pray that you uh, be the healer that you are. We're, we trust you uh, and we give um, everything to you and we just pray for the healing uh, that you can bring to Pastor Jay and bring him back to us soon. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.
Thank you for joining us today here to worship our God. We can be in 40 million different places right now, but we're so thankful that you came to worship with us today. Um, and as we dive into God's Word right now, I challenge you to pull out a Bible uh, and to focus in and to be changed by God's Word today. Today we're going to be in 1 John chapter 5, talking about the birthmarks of a true believer. To be honest, I, I've been doing a, a, a study through a book called of being a child of God by Warren Wiersbe. And in there in that book there's a chapter called Birthmarks, which a lot of these different points came from there, but uh, the the word of God is so true and it challenged my life so I wanted to share it with you guys. So we're going to be in 1 John chapter 5. Uh, so if you'll go ahead and flip there. Uh, let me read the first 5 verses here. It says whoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God, and everyone that loveth him, that begat, uh, loveth him also that is begotten of him. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not grievous. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Who is he that overcometh the world, but he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. Of God. Verse 13 says, These things have I written unto you that you may believe in the name of the Son of God, and that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe in the name of the Son of God. Let's pray before we dive into the message. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you that you're our God and that you have came down to this earth to save us. And we pray that you um, speak to us this, this morning. Uh, we pray that you speak to us through your word and help us to obey it as you speak to us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. When I was in high school, I loved basketball. And it was one of my favorite things of the year. I couldn't wait the whole the whole beginning of the school year. I couldn't wait till October or November whenever basketball would start. Now, I wasn't really good at it, but I, I enjoyed it nonetheless. And one of my favorite things at the beginning of the season was going out and buying new basketball shoes. I love the opportunity to be able to do that. And I always tried to find the best pair, but also the cheapest pair, because I, I personally am kind of cheap. So I went online, and I was trying to find the best deal, and I found these, these pair of Jordans that were around like $100 retail, but they were 35 or 40 bucks. And I was like, that's the one I want. I'm going to go get that one. I went to my dad, and we ended up buying them. I get an email later. And let's say they're going to be there in two to three weeks. So uh, we're waiting for them. And I get an email a couple days later saying that they're being shipped. But they're being shipped from Hong Kong, which usually means that they're a big fake. But I was holding on to hope. They came. And so I'm waiting for them to come. Two or three weeks come, come by. And then they finally get into the mill. And I get them. I open them up. From the distance that I was at, they looked awesome. And they were great. But then I got a little bit closer, and you you could see the Jordan sign that was on there. You know, the, the Jordan going up and dunking the ball. And it was hot glued to, <laughs> to the shoe. It was completely a fake, and it was awful. But, again, I'm cheap, so I'm not going to go buy another pair of shoes. So I chose to wear them. Uh, I practiced with them for two or three practices, and then my foot was coming out of the shoe. It was a disaster. I tried to fix them with fishing line, with sewing it together, and it, that didn't work either. My shoe, my, my toes were coming out of the shoe. And because it was a fake shoe, it didn't really work very well. Uh, it, it, it wouldn't do its purpose because it was fake. Fake shoes do not last long, just as fake Christians don't last long. Matthew chapter 7, verse 21 through 23 says, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. God calls true believers to be children of God. We will have indicators that we are his children. Uh, it will have birthmarks, if you will. 
people say all the time that I look just like my brother Jason and it annoys the mess out of me. Um, but I guess I've been told it so many different times that, that we look alike that I'll finally accept it. Um, I have a picture of my family for you guys. Um, and if you look at the Huff family, uh, you can easily see that we are a family because we all look alike. You can even differentiate between those who were born into the Huff family um, and those who were even married into it. We all have a common gene of Huff in us that shows that we are in the family. And in the same way, we have a common gene that shows that we are in the family of God. Of God. That doesn't mean we look alike physically, but in our actions, we are going to look the same and have the same attributes as well. We believe in a salvation by faith in the only Son of God, who is Jesus. That's the only way to heaven. It's through faith and trust in a person named Jesus Christ who died for our sins. But works cannot save us as seen um, in Ephesians 2, 8 through 9. Um, it, it, and it tells us that um, we cannot be saved by our works, lest we, lest we should boast. Um, however, true salvation will show works as a byproduct of salvation. Uh, when you are truly born into the family of God, well, you will have some birthmarks as proof of being saved. And since we are children of God who have, born, have been born into his family, there will be some evidence of that through what I like to call birthmarks. Um, and so we're going to dive into that. If you'll look into 1 John, but we're going to be in chapter 3 this time. Chapter 3, verse 24, it says, And he that keepeth his commandments dwelleth in him, and he in him. And hereby we know that he abideth in us by the Spirit which he hath given us. The first, the first birthmark of a true believer is someone who has a relationship with God and his word. Again, it says, And he that keepeth his commandments dwelleth in him, and he in him. Hereby he knoweth that he abideth in us. When there is no relationship with God, there is no salvation. That, that's the whole salvation. It, it's our relationship with Jesus Christ. Whether it's a good relationship or a bad relationship, we still have a relationship with God. Um, it is impossible to say that I am a part of something if I do not interact with it. My pet peeve in life is bandwagon fans. In, in sports, there's these people that, you know, they pull for whoever's winning at the time. Okay, they, they, don't, they never watch a game. They don't know any of the players, but they choose to pull for them. But they're really not a true fan because they just, they just like them because they're good. Um, the same can be seen in our well. It, the same can be seen in our relationships with others. Um, the when I was trying to win the heart of my wife when I was in college, um, I had to get to know her. Um, it started with an interest, which led to me finally mustering up the courage to go say hey to her. Um, I, and I was really really awkward uh, whenever that happened. But the one thing about Rebecca um, is that she loved to hang out with other people. She loved to be in big groups. And a person who wanted to get to know her and to date her, I, I needed one-on-one -on -one time with her. And again, I was awkward, so I didn't, I didn't really want to just say, hey, I, I want to hang out with you. And that would have been the smart thing to do. But I was trying to find different ways to get to where we could have some one-on-one -on -one time. But unless I purposely went out to say, I want to spend time with you, then we would never have that. We would have never gotten to know each other. We had to purposely... Um, have that one-on-one -on -one time with her. And I did in order to um, win her heart. I had to find out what her likes and what her dislikes are. Uh, I, I found out that she hates when people smack. I found out that she likes um, she likes peanut butter. She likes long walks on the beach, and she likes me. And so you know that those are the few different things that that she likes. And I found those out. And me reaching out to her, me getting to know her was the way that we started our relationship. And, and those those few minutes of conversation turned into hours, which turned into us going on dates, which turned into us getting engaged to us being married. And, and that relationship would have never started if I never purposely went out and talked to her. And that's exactly how our relationship with Jesus happens. It starts with an interest 
put in you by the Holy Spirit, which turns into the action of us believing in Jesus Christ as our Savior. From then on, true believers want to spend time with him. Just like I want to spend time with my wife or people that are close to me. I'm going to want to spend time with God if I'm a believer in him. If I'm a follower of God, I'm going to want to see to pray with him and talk to him. I'm going to want to hear from his word through through personal Bible study, through listening to, to people talk about the word of God or preach from the word of God. We show our love to God by having a relationship with him. We have to find out what his likes are, what his dislikes are, and obey them. We show our love to God by obeying his commandments. A true relationship with him will produce a love for him by spending time with him and obeying his word. The second birthmark of a believer is practicing righteousness. 1 John chapter 5, verse 3, it says, For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous or burdensome. We show we are a believer by practicing righteousness. Again, salvation is not by works, as we talked about. However, practicing righteousness is a birthmark of our faith. In James chapter 2, verses 14 through 17, it says, What doth it profit, my brethren, though a man say he hath faith and have not works? Can faith save him? If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto him, Depart in peace, be warmed and filled, notwithstanding... Ye give them not those things which are needful to the body, what doth it profit? Even so, if if it hath not if faith hath not works, it is dead, being alone. If we have faith but no works, God says that our faith is dead. Um, and, and I want you to notice two things um, in, in the idea of practicing righteousness. First of all, um, in Go to 1 John chapter 3, verses 9 and 10. It says, Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin, for his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin, because he is born of God. In this the children of God are manifest, and the children of the devil. Whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God, neither he that loveth not his brother. Where it says, whoever is born of God does not commit sin, literal translation is there, the literal translation there is saying that we do not practice sin or we do not make a habit of of sinning. Um, that doesn't mean that we're never going to sin, but it does mean that we will practice righteousness. We will practice obeying God. No one born of God makes a practice of sinning. He can he continually God continually convicts us and corrects us through his word and through the Holy Spirit. That's why we cannot. In, in 1 John chapter 3, verse 16 and 17, it says, All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. A Christian doesn't simply just get away with sin. A true Christian practices righteousness. And I love the word practice in these verse, verses. As you've seen over, over the time, maybe, uh, and, and knowing me, um, I, I love playing the guitar. I love the opportunity to play the, play music, and it took me a while to be able to play the way that I do now. Now, I'm not great at it, but um, I, I at least can, can do some things with it, but it took a long time for me to get to the point where I am at now. Um, I picked up a guitar when I was an, a senior in high school, and my granddad gave me one um, it was, it was in his, he had it at his house. He showed, I uh, showed interest in it. And so he gave it to me. I'm very thankful for that. Um, and that sparked my interest and I, and I would play it and get on my parents' nerves. I would hit the wrong notes. Everything would sound awful. I would develop these cal calluses on my hands and on my fingers to where it hurts. But through the practice, I was able to get better and to get better and to get better. And I, and I still need to practice. I still need to get better in order to get to the where I want to be. But it all started with an interest in practicing to do better. Without the practice, I would not be able to play. I could have barely uh, easily said, there's no way I'm going to be able to play like the professionals do. So therefore, I just don't even need to do it. Um, and, and I could have gave up. But I had a desire to be able to play, so I put the practice in. 
You may be thinking, I have messed up so much and so often in my life and sinned so often against God, and there's no way that God wants me to be his child. And that is a lie from the devil. God did not call you to be perfect. He called you to practice. He called you to make a pointed effort to do what is right and to please him. Will you mess up along the way? Of course. But he is forgiving and merciful to us. First John 1 John 1.9 says if we, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and he is just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. God makes us clean when we confess our sins to him, allowing us to keep practicing and to keep getting better at pleasing him. We will never master it, but as a child of God, you will not continue sinning because of the seed God has planted in you. You'll have a desire to obey him and to keep practicing righteousness. And then at the end of that verse, it says that obeying is not grievous or burdensome. For, for this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not burdensome. Many times people think of you think if you follow God, you will never have fun again and you'll be eternally trapped and to do God's will. God is not saying that you, we will never sin, but that we will not be a continuous desire uh, to sin, feeling trapped in Christianity. We have a new desire to please God and Him alone. For instance, during high school and college, I worked at a, a, a parking institution um, called McLaren Parking. Uh, and what we did is we, during uh, football season at NC State games, uh, I would go five hours before the game and so that we could open up so all of these state fans can come in and to to see uh to tailgate um and by the way i'm a huge carolina fan which means i'm not i, I don't really like state that much and all of these these fans they come in they're they're completely drunk they're completely um arrogant they they honk their horn at me saying i want to park here not there and then and i get completely um, disregarded by these people for five hours, me standing sometimes in the 30 degree weather, sometimes it's raining, and I hated the job. But I loved when I got paid. Okay, I loved when my paycheck came and then it made me keep on working for them because I got a paycheck. The only reason I was there was for the paycheck. Uh, and I endured it to get the paycheck. And a lot of times we as Christians, we sometimes act like Christianity is like that. That, I, I guess I'll go to church today. I guess I'll read my Bible today. I'll pray today. I, I'll do what's right. I will love my neighbor as myself today because God tells me to do it. Don't want to, but because God is going to give me uh, eternity in heaven, that means I'll do it. God says we're going to have a desire to do it. We're gonna, it's not going to be burdensome in our lives. On the flip side, I told you I'm a Carolina fan. I was able to park some Carolina games. So, so some basketball games there. And the cool thing about that was that during halftime, or right when the game started until about three quarters of the way through the game, I got to go inside the Dean Dome and watch the game. And I look forward to go working that game because I could go inside. God tells us that we're going to look forward to doing what he's called us to do. They're not going to be burdensome. Um, we're going to purposely please God with um, our lives and through our obedience with them and enjoy it. Um, and that's a mark of a true believer. And lastly, the last birthmark that is seen in these passages is loving God and others. John chapter 5, verse 3, if you'll flip there again, um, it says, um, let me get there, for this is the love of God that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not for whoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. And also, let's go to chapter 4, verse 7 through 11. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God, and knoweth God. He that loveth not, knoweth not God, for God is love. A birthmark of our faith is our love for God and others. Verse Chapter 4, verse 7 and 8, as we just read, says that if you love God, you will love others. And if you don't love others, that is a sign that you do not know God because God is love. God is serious about us loving others and is pleased when we do it because it shows him to other people. God is love. If you think of all of God's attributes, 
And you think of, of that he's just, that he's kind, that he's compassionate, that he's forgiving, and the list can go on. They all can be summed up by his love for us. He's just to us because he loves us. He's kind to everyone because he loves everyone. He's compassionate because he loves us. He forgives us because he loves us. And if that is true, how can we love God? If it's true that we show our love for God by loving others and loving him, how do we do that? We love God by doing what we just talked about, which is obeying his commandments. The word of God says that um, we show our love to God by obeying his commandments, um, by trusting him through our submission. Nothing shows more uh, love than doing what pleases someone. I love my life. My, I love my wife and she loves me as well. I do not love all of her hobbies, though. <laughs> she loves the antique shop. She loves shopping in general. She can go into a store, be there for three hours, look at every single article of clothing just to leave and to not buy anything. To me, that's a wasted day, but she loves that. She loves to do it. So therefore, I go and sit through the store, talk with her, enjoy the time together, um, and show my love to her by doing things that please her. Um, and, and I'm just so thankful um, that God do, does that for us as well. He shows our love to us um, on a daily basis. We lo um, In the same way, we should uh, want to put God above our priorities um, and, and love him by doing what pleases him. Living righteously pleases him, and it shows our love towards him. And also, we love others by putting others above ourselves. If there is anybody that needs to work on that, this it's me. Love does not come naturally for a lot of us. It takes hard work and practice to develop a selfless spirit. Since it is the nature of God to be loving, a believer will have the nature of loving others, uh, both unsaved and saved. Look at everyone as God sees them. They see them as his child. They see him as a person that he created. Everybody um, that he created is perfect. He, he created us um, and, and loves us. And we should love others. We, we will um, love um, all people. Sacrifice for them as God has done for you. That is what he commanded in verse, uh, verse chapter 4, verse 11. It says, Beloved, if God so loved us, we'd all, all also to love one another. Christ died for you on the cross, um, forgiving us from an eternity in a place called hell. Last time I checked, none of you have had to die for someone. Um, so the least we can do is love our neighbor and forgive them. True love for others is seen in forgiving and forgiveness over bitterness towards somebody, selflessness over selfishness, and building up over tearing down. We'll also have a love for the other believers. In chapter 5, verse number 2, it says, By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments. It says, By this we will, we will know that we love the children of God. Believers love spending time with believers. We're, we're like-minded. We, we, we have the same goal. We're going to love to spend time with each other. Now, it doesn't mean you're going to be best friends with everybody, but we're going to enjoy talking about the Word of God, talking about God with others, um, telling them how God's in, in, inspiring us or um, is building us up or encouraging us. Um, for instance, um, I don't dread going to church. I hate this virtual church. I mean, I love the fact that we can do it um, and that it, we this is an option for us when we can't meet uh, safely, but I love being able to be with the body of Christ. Um, it's encouraging. It's something that um, we need in our lives. I enjoy being able to worship together with other believers because it's a part of my nature as a believer to worship God with other people. Show love to all people. That's what God tells us to do, to, to the unsaved, to the saved, to your neighbor, to your family, to the person that you can't stand being around. God says, show your love to them. Show your love by service, by forgiveness, and by selflessness to uh, them. God has shown us in his word a few of the birthmarks you will have if you are a believer. That does not mean that you will have all of these mastered. Again, God tells us to practice them. Um, Warren Wiersbe said in his book, the fact that we've been born again into God's family doesn't mean that we've automatically defeated the world, the flesh, or the devil once and for all. 
or that selfishness will never rear its ugly head again. But there are resources available to defeat these enemies. God has given us resources to help us through temptation by his word and his Holy Spirit. So believer, how are these birthmarks being shown in your life? Uh, you may say, I, I have none of these because I've never been born again. Um, God tells us that if we accept uh, if we accept that we have sinned, uh, that we believe that Jesus Christ came down um, to save us and that salvation is only through him, and we confess that Jesus Christ is Lord in our life and follow him, that he will save us, um, and that he will save us from etern- and give us eternal life. Uh, you may say, uh, well, does your life have the characteristics of a relationship with God if you're a believer? Um, are you practicing righteousness? Do you love others? Have you been trying to hide your birthmarks? Have you, have you been ashamed of, of what God has done in our lives, purposed in your heart today to show the birthmarks that God has put in you? Spend time with him today. Spend time with him this week, every day this week. Purpose in your heart to spend time with him. Purpose in your heart. As he tells you the things that that please him, choose to practice those things and love others this week. Um, Let's pray. Ask God to help us to obey his word. Um, And then we'll be done. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you that you have given us birthmarks in our life that show that we are Christians. Uh, I pray that you help us this week, to spend time with you in in your word, to purpose in our heart, to build up our relationship with you. Um, Help us to practice what you have put on our heart, Uh, to see what we've done wrong, to confess that, but to practice the righteousness that that pleases you, and then to love others, to love you and to love others. God, we thank you for your salvation. We thank you for your word. Help us to be changed by it today. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.